In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a mesh in Houdini and dynamically subdivide it. This is helpful if you have a area that needs more polygons, but you don't want to subdivide the entire mesh. In this example, you're going to see how we get 10x better results on subdividing in terms of polygon count. So I'm in Houdini. I'm going to just drop down this rubber toy test geometry for the sake of this tutorial. I'll dive right in here going to clean it up. All right. So first off, in order to dynamically subdivide, traditionally, if you were to just subdivide something, you drop down a subdivide node and it subdivides every single polygon. But say you needed to subdivide this quite a lot to say, maybe add some custom displacement, either right now or at render time. And you needed to say, subdivide this by three. Let's just change our element size to say 0.1. So say you wanted like some custom noise, okay? But say you only needed it in a certain part instead of the whole object. Well, right now we have a close to a million polygons by going this route, okay? So there's a more optimal way to actually do this, and that is by dynamically subdividing. So a quick and easy way to do this is say you want to explicitly specify where you want to subdivide based on a curve. You know, sometimes you're dealing with a character that has maybe a skin mesh or a building that needs some detail in, in certain parts. What well, you could do, drop down a draw curve, SOP, change the projection to geometry. And we're just going to draw a curve along the geometry here for this example. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to drop down a for loop. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is change the iterations to one, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is plug in our geometry here and I'm gonna drop down a primitive wrangle, okay? So we're gonna do just a little bit of code here. And what I wanna do is essentially take this geometry and reference where the curve is. So to first do that, I'm gonna say float dist is equal and I'm gonna use a function called x, y, z, dist, and I need to grab the this input. So Houdini is kind of like, it, it starts from zero, one, two, three. So I'm gonna say x, y, z, dist, three. And what I wanna do is pass in my current position of every prim, and that will then return us the distance from every single primitive here is now measuring its distance to this curve that we drew. And you could use any input geometry here. So now what we want to do is specify a max distance. So I'm going to say float max dist is going to be equal to channel F max. And what this will do is this line of code, if I hit execute, will now create a parameter that we can easily say, let's say 0.3. So the max distance that we're going to look is 0.3 meters. Okay. So I'm going to say if my measured dist is less than max dist, my group, I'm gonna add a group dynamically here, my group, and you can do this by saying int at group and then underscore whatever your group name is to be, sub, I'll just sub for subdivision, is equal to one, else int at group sub is equal to zero. So by doing this, we're essentially creating a subdivision group on these primitives. And we can just test that by looking up our subdivision group here. Okay, so we see it is, this is all of the geometry that's being encompassed. So maybe we start with like 0.2, okay? So now what we can do is drop down a subdivide node and we can change the group here to sub and plug it in, okay? So now we see that it only subdivides this area. What you're gonna to wanna to do is also change your algorithm to Houdini Catmull Clark. That way you won't get any faces that kind of disconnect during the subdivision. So say if we run this for loop three iterations, we're gonna start subdividing just this area by three. But we see we run into some complicated geometry situations and this isn't really dynamically, it's just kind of subdividing in a certain area. So what we would want to do is if we think about this, as it subdivides once, if we're trying to optimize towards that curve, we don't actually want to subdivide this outer area much anymore. We wanna actually 
keep going inward because as these polygons are getting smaller, we should be able to fine tune and get a closer dynamic match to our curve. So in order to do that, during each subsequent, each subsequent iteration, we wanna reduce our max distance. So how do we do that in a for loop? What we can do is create a meta import node here. And I'll just move these things down here. I'm gonna just rename this to meta. What I can do is also say my int iteration is equal to channel int iteration, okay? So now that creates a parameter there, and this is an int. So what I wanna do is from this node, this, this has data here, and it says, we have detail attributes for the iteration, the number of iterations, the value, and the i value. What we want is this iteration value, and it's a detail attribute. That occurs in the for loop. So we could type an expression saying detail, and then reference the node here, meta. Okay, so we've passed in our surface node. This is the node that we're, we're trying to grab. The attribute name would be iteration, because that's what we're trying to grab. And then you can just put zero as the index. So now, as each iteration occurs, it's going to update the iteration during this for loop, okay? So now what we need to do is get the maximum amount of iterations. So int iteration count is equal to channel int count. And this one's easy to grab because at the end of our for loop here, we have our max iterations here. We can right click copy parameter, go back to our primitive wrangle, right click, paste relative references. And lastly, what we can do is explicitly set a new value, say float value is equal to fit, and we're going to fit the current iteration, okay, from zero to our iteration count. And we're going to fit that from one to zero, okay? So now what we could do is basically we have a value that's getting smaller as these values iterate. So what we could do is basically say, our max dist, you're going to get smaller because you're gonna times yourself by that value that's reducing over every iteration. It's having, it's going to half itself every iteration. So say there's 10 iterations. At iteration one, this iteration count's gonna be 0.9 and then 0.8 and then 0.7. So this this max dist is actually going to reduce from 0.2 and onwards as it iterates. Okay, so we can test that here. So we see that with two iterations, our first iteration, our first iteration subdivide, subdivided all of these polygons here, okay? And maybe, maybe what we could do is try and just color the red, maybe even see if we can just get our, a random color here, okay? Maybe that'll work. So you see that at the second iteration, it subdivided closer to the curve here dynamically. And if you go further, you'll see there's more polygons in there that are getting subdivided. And if you go further, again, it's not subdividing the primitives that we don't need, but it's also making it nice and smooth. So I'll turn off this color here. So now we see that we have this nice dynamic subdivision. And if you were to drop down a mountain node here, then you're getting the resolution of whatever you needed, say a displacement or something, but the amount of polygons here is only close to 100,000 versus say you had a mask and you only wanted to do the same thing here, you're getting close to a million. So this is 10X less polygons, but you're getting such, such a more refined result based on how you need it. Now, of course, dynamic subdivision is not needed all the time, but I think this is a useful setup for you to be able to really hone in on creating exaggerated details on certain objects that you need, but you're not actually getting crazy high polygon counts if you don't need them. If you've made it this far, go ahead and, uh, you know, like, subscribe, whatever the YouTube algorithm thing is these days. Um, I guess you enjoyed it. All right, take care.